In this video, I want to introduce the sort of sample problem which we're going to be working with to introduce the Poisson model in Bayesian inference. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by introducing the situation and the sort of example which we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at the assumptions which underpin the sort of modelling of our data via a Poisson model. And finally, we're going to talk about our goals of the Bayesian inference or doing Bayesian inference on this particular example. So starting off with the introduction, the sort of example which we're going to be talking about here is if we imagine that we've got a country and within that country we have a number of different cities of sort of similar size. So each of these crosses here represents a city. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at across each of these different cities, call them sort of A, B, C, etc. We're going to be looking at determinants of violent crime in each of these different cities. So what we might imagine that is that over the sort of course of a sort of representative month, City A has 50 violent crimes reported, for example, City B has 33 and let's say C has something like 41. As I say, this is just sample data. But obviously, this situation here is sort of count data. There's no way that this can be non-negative, and there's no way that it can take on a non-integer value. So because of that particular example, that might seem to be the case, or it might seem to be the case, that we could use the Poisson model to represent our data generating process here. So what we're going to imagine is that within a given city I, we're going to model the sort of number of crimes using a Poisson distribution, which has got a mean sort of rate per month of lambda. So that's the introduction. Let's now look at the assumptions which underlie the use of the Poisson model here. So remember that to use the Poisson model, implicitly what we're assuming in this particular case is that the sort of crime counts or the sorry, the crime events are independent. So that means that one crime happening, one violent crime happening, doesn't influence the probability of another crime happening in that time period. And over the sort of short time period of a month, that seems to be a relatively okay sort of assumption in this case. And the second assumption, remember, for the Poisson distribution is that we're going to assume that the rate lambda is sort of constant spatially. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that the sort of mean rate of crimes is constant across each of the different cities. So this is actually a relatively sort of strong assumption. And one of the assumptions which we're making in order to sort of allow this assumption to be okay is that the cities are of sort of similar size. And we might also like to assume that they've got similar sorts of characteristics. So perhaps they've got similar levels of unemployment. Perhaps the demographics are similar in the cities because any of those differences, we might, in which case, sort of question whether it is okay to model the situation assuming that lambda is constant across the different cities. And actually, later on, we're going to relax this assumption and we're going to introduce a sort of Poisson regression model. But for now, we're going to assume that lambda is constant spatially. Finally, let's talk about the goals of doing Bayesian inference in this particular circumstance. Well, typically one of the things which we get as an output for Bayesian inference is the posterior distribution of lambda. So that's a full probability distribution which represents our sort of knowledge about the parameter lambda, the mean rate of violent crimes. And remember, it's also the variance in violent crimes across different cities. And it represents all of our sort of data and pre-experimental knowledge on that particular parameter. So that's one of the goals. But what we'd actually also like to be able to do is we'd like to be able to use this model for prediction. And particularly what we'd like to be able to do is we would like to be able to sort of predict crime in sort of a given city, which has similar characteristics. Um, in a similar sort of representative month. So what we're actually going to form here is we're going to actually form the posterior predictive distribution. And that sort of illustrates which sort of levels of crime we think are most likely 
given our data and our pre-experimental knowledge. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to contrast that with the prior predictive distribution, which is before we actually get the data, what would we expect the crime rate to be in a given city?